welcome everybody. Um, we invite you to, uh, number one, if you need the closed captions, um, we are going to enable the live uh, transcription enable. And uh, so the closed captionings will naturally show up at the bottom of your screen in case you need them. If you find them distracting, you can go into those three dots that say more and hit hide subtitle and you won't see them anymore. But for anybody who does need the subtitles, those are enabled. Please go right ahead and put those on. Let us know if you have a hard time locating where they are. Um, we also invite you to go ahead and uh, click on that chat thing at the bottom of your screen so that you can see the chat window. Uh, for most of us, it'll show up on the right-hand side. And uh, we often take questions from the chat as we go. So please feel free to type your questions, your comments, your responses, your violent difference of opinion right there into the chat. And please feel free as well. We'd love it if you would say in the chat, where are you coming in from? And uh, if you like, what are you writing right now? Is it a memoir? Is it a novel? How's it going? Let us know. Uh, so welcome, Ashley, are we good to like actually start, start? We are set. I'm going to mute everybody. So Allison, you can just unmute, but we are already recording because we were having a little chit chat as we opened uh, the room early talking about platform. Imagine that. Yeah. Imagine that. So welcome today. We are talking content buckets. And this is the meeting for all of you who ever feel like, oh crap, I should probably post today, but I have no idea what I want to talk about. Or I need to write a blog today and I have no idea what I want to share with my audience. I'm not even interesting. How dare I share my life with the world? Why would I think that anyone would ever want to listen to me? And then like, I just go into a giant shame spiral and then I'm like sobbing on the couch, but maybe Maybe that's just me. Is that just me? No, not just you. We have a puppy dog barking. Is that at Beth Ann's house? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna oh. meet you, Beth Ann. I do. We do like our doggy friends who visit, though. So we are going to talk tonight about how to make sure that you always have an idea of what to talk about, whether that is for your blog, for social media for the next article you want to pitch to mass media, for the next culturally relevant essay you want to publish in a literary magazine, for the newsletter that you send out in your email to your audience, or even just the conversations that you're gonna have with people when you are meeting and greeting people either in a virtual space or in a real space when you're comfortable and safe meeting people in real spaces again. Before we dive into content buckets, we wanted to share some feedback we got from an Express Lane member. Express Lane is our paid membership newsletter. It comes out Mondays and Fridays, and each day you get a bite-sized piece of actionable content. Ashley, will you share what Sue told us? I will. Dear Allison and Ashley, it's only been a week, but Express Lane has already helped me in the following ways. The freebie as mission statement was a challenge and hard to distill into a line that would fit into my IG bio, but I did it. I tried and failed to make a functioning switch over to beacons, but that process led me to revise my link tree headings and to better link and coordinate with my website subscriber form. I did not know about public view in Facebook and didn't realize that nearly all of my posts were set to friends only, so I fixed that. And also updated my bio, which was in need. Oi. Anyway, along with the questions that are surely pouring your way, I wanted to send a note of thanks and reiterate that Express Lane rocks. Cheers, Sue Mel. Thank you so much, Sue. We are so glad the Express Lane is helping. If anyone else is interested, please check it out at thewritersbridge.com slash Express Lane. Uh, question of the week. Sunita asks, I'm limited on time, but I can hire an intern or a young college student to tweet and manage social media. How do I train them, manage them, et cetera? Ashley, what is your assistant situation and how does it work? So I hired my 21 year old niece from Winnipeg last year around this time to help me with book launch. Um, she had a couple of really specific jobs to do at the beginning. And then every time I feel overwhelmed by things that I am doing, I go through the decision process, decision-making process of, am I going to take the time to train her on this 
or am I just going to keep doing it myself? So the specific jobs she did for me, when someone pre-ordered a book in order to get the thank you, the pre-order incentive, which was the full audiobook, they had to email their screenshot. So I set up a specific email orders at manitobawomanmedia.com and those went to my assistant, Gina. She would then confirm that they did order, put into a Google sheet where they ordered from and their order number, sort of just so I could keep track of pre-orders. Um, they don't actually show up in any place. So I was getting an idea of whether people were ordering from my local bookstore or on Amazon, just for my own information. So and she's collating she, data for you. Does she exactly. do anything more sophisticated than collating data? Does she do any of your social media? Does she help with anything on the back end? How do you how do you employ her to save yourself time? When I batch videos, I will upload them to a shared album and she will caption all of them and then pop them over in a ready to post album. That saves a lot of time. Um, I find when you're going to work with an assistant, make sure you get clear or bring some awareness to your working style. For me, my most important projects, they percolate in my head and in my heart for a long time. And then I do them last minute. So that used to be my reels. Now those are my newsletters. And you, you may think, oh, if it's last minute, Ashley, that must be lowest on your priority list. Actually, it's the highest. It's the highest because I let it, I let it um, grow inside me before I actually get it out there because I want to make sure that it's right. That is my creative process. So now Gina will do things like make quote cards for me, caption those reels. And then I handle writing the newsletters usually on the day that I send them out. I just hired a virtual assistant to work with me, really enjoying working with her. She's really focused. She's really organized. Um, I have found that I need to be very specific and I have to know the process myself well enough to tell them what I want. So for example, um, I wanted her to recycle some tweets for last year. Last year, I did a daily tweet for NaNoWriMo and each tweet was targeted to where I thought people would be in the process of writing their book at that time. And it went down really well. People really liked it. I really enjoyed showing up every day and responding to what people had to say. So I said, hey, I want to reschedule those posts for next November. Can you go into Twitter, pull them and, and put them in again? And she's like, oh, I discovered you can't recycle a post natively on Twitter. Like you can't go back to the old tweet and retweet it. And I'm like, oh, I knew that. I meant copy paste them, copy paste them and use Twitter's scheduling to do it. But I wasn't specific enough in how I gave the information. And so I've worked with assistants on and off for probably 15 years now. When I was a circus performer, I very often had an assistant either in my life or at an event. And I love collaborating, but a lot of times what an assistant really wants is for you to say specifically what you want them to do so that they can do it and check it off and be done. They don't really want to collaborate. So be clear. Do you want someone who organizes you? Do you want someone who you delegate the grunt work to? Do you want someone who can give you more creative ideas or teach you how to better use the formatting that you're using, the, the mailing list software you're using, whatever, and make it clear for yourself what you want before you hire somebody and start throwing money at them. Ashley, you want to add anything else to that? Um, now that I have grown my business in a few different areas, the book is launched. My next book is now, you know, in the cooker. I was looking to hire uh, a replacement for my niece because she's going to be out for a few months. And the assistant that was dropped in my lap was wildly overqualified to be an assistant. So I actually just hired her as my COO, which I never even thought before that that's what I needed. Um, but she is now overseeing everything from a strategic um, place and is going to be doing those tasks that my assistant was doing until she comes back. Um, so now I actually have someone to help me keep me organized and on track. Um, but that was something that I had to grow into with uh, my business. So let's dive into content buckets. What the heck is your content? Now, if you have been with us for a while through the Writer's Bridge, you probably remember a thing that we did sometime last year, which is the idea of a magazine cover. You guys should all be looking at the amazing and talented Casey Mulligan Walsh. 
And what Casey has done here, and I'm going to show you some more examples. She has picked the major topics that she is interested in talking about online, in her newsletter, in her books, in her articles. Uh, we have another one here for Stephanie. Stephanie Weaver, uh, specialist in cooking, specialist in migraines. Is this what you think of when you hear chronic illness? Healthy Eats and Authors in the Blue and Yellow Kitchen. Um, Abby, hi, Abby. I know you're here tonight. Abby is also a graphic designer. So Abby's magazine color looks freaking amazing here. Books and writing, freelance life, authenticity from warrior to warrior, which I think is a fantastic title for something. And so each of these people put together, what are the things I most like to talk about, to share about? And they're not necessarily all about writing. So Joe Ashalonu here, five tips on finding your aesthetic and your voice, which is like, fun and a little bit fluffy, uh, toss the itinerary, how to travel without a plan and not miss a thing. You know, it's, it's culture, it's lifestyle, but then she's also got no more slave narratives and other tropes to avoid. That's where she gets serious. That's where she digs deep. 15 tips on creating more dynamic BIPOC characters. So we challenge you to take a few moments sometime today or sometime this week and make a list of what would be the cover of your magazine. If you as a writer were a magazine, what would the cover of your magazine look like? What kind of subjects and topics would be on there? What would your photos show you doing? Now, if you want, you can actually make the magazine cover. It's kind of fun to do that. We really enjoy doing them. If you did this exercise already last year, it is a great time to put out another issue. The world has changed a lot in 12 months. How have you changed in this 12 months? And so we challenge you to try that magazine cover challenge. Um, and Allison, speaking of how people have changed in 12 months, when I made that magazine cover, um, some of my writer friends in Facebook writer group said, oh no, but you're the keeping, you're the keeping it hot mom. And I thought, am I really? I just made a couple of videos on that. I don't really know. Guys, my next book is Keeping It Hot, the workbook. So taking a look at how, how other people react, like showing it to some writer friends, sharing it, uh, can really be helpful because sometimes they see, what, they see what's special in you when you're like, oh, does anybody really care about that? It could be helpful. And so what this list does for you, whether you formally make it into a fun magazine cover, and as you can see, it can be fantastically designed. It can be a rudimentary design. The point is, what's your mood? Who are you? What do you want to share with the world? And think about that list of topics. I would say pick between four and six topics like four or five or six topics, at least one of them is something to do with your personal life, which is the part of your personal life you are willing to publicly share, not randomly violate your privacy and be naked for strangers on the internet. At least one of them should be specifically the topic of your book and the others can be related in those ways. So for example, if your specialty was gardening and maybe your new book is a memoir about gardening with your mom. And so part of it might be cool mother daughter activities where you can do something with your mom and not fight. I would sign up for that magazine. You know, so look at how can you use these topics to generate things you want to say in the world. Ashley, you want to add to that? Yeah, I just want to hit on what Allison just said there. Okay, so we're talking about um, we're talking about a memoirist who loves gardening. I am thinking this is probably a literary memoir. And what Allison suggested for the magazine cover was something that you would maybe see on on the front of a magazine at. Uh, the checkout line, right? Like better homes and gardens, um, real simple, something like that. Okay. Even if you are a literary writer, we want people to open their wallets to buy your book. So thinking what would make someone click, what could then be a freebie to sign up for my email list? Like, how can I take what I know and I love and I write about and make it something people will then say, oh, I'm going to get something out of that. So simplifying is necessary. Now, if you have a hard time thinking about 
gosh, what kind of topic should be in my content buckets? What is my magazine cover? One of the things I really like that uh, Writers Bridge member Karen DeBonis did is she sets up Google alerts for her topics. And this does two things. Number one, it shows her what other people are saying about the topics she cares about. And number two, it gives her stuff to write about to tweet about, to quote, to react to, to respond to. I like to keep a list of blogs and book reviews to quote and to share. And when I visit a blog, I very often will copy two or three tweets and then use the scheduling function on Twitter to schedule quotes and links back to that for the next couple of weeks. And when I do that, I tag the magazine if they've got a Twitter and I tag the author who wrote it as well. And so that's also a way for me to lift up other writers, interact with the community and on a purely selfish level, establish, hey, I am part of this conversation. I am also an expert in this field. I am also someone who has an opinion about this topic. And that's a really great way to participate. Um, Danielle asks in the chat, uh, Danielle's brand is Cannabis Mom. And if you haven't checked out her Instagram, it is fantastic. She says, each time I post about something that's not cannabis, I get very little engagement. When I stick to cannabis and trending sounds, I get lots of engagement. Is my case strange and particular? Ashley. Okay, cannabis is um, a fantastic niche online right now. So the fact, I'm gonna drop uh, Danielle's Instagram right here in the chat. So the fact that she wrote a book called Weed Mom and people are most interested in her cannabis content is not a surprise. So Danielle, this is what you can do. You can, you can go a little deeper into that niche, okay? Go a little bit deeper, but take, take your angle. What is it? What is it that you wanna be the expert expert on for weed mom is it like sex and cannabis is it parenting and cannabis like take it a little further in and share more of your personal story and then people will remember why you are their favorite weed mom out of all the weed moms that they follow stephanie posts in the chat a link about how to set up a google news alert if you miss the link just go ahead and google how to set up a google news alert and it'll pop right up um, and also I will post a uh, link to a blog in our follow-up newsletter where I talk about some of these magazine covers and give a more detailed explanation of how to do this exercise. The next thing for generating content, for knowing what you want to talk about is what are your comp authors doing? Ashley, tell us what comp authors are. Okay. So comp authors or comp accounts are the people on line, if we're talking about posting online, the, the people online who are talking to the audience who you want to reach. So what I recommend the most, it's going to be similar to your comp authors a lot of times, um, but some can be social media, Twitter accounts, newsletters that talk about your topic, even if they're not published authors. So we look at what they do. We sign up for their newsletter. We put notifications on that's what I did when I was really researching, put notifications on for Liz Gilbert and Glennon Doyle and a whole bunch of other people. And I started asking myself, what would I do differently? Not, oh, that post of Liz Gilbert's was her most popular. I would look at her post and think, what would I have written in the caption? I would look at Glennon Doyle's and said, what would I have added about parenting there? What would I have said? And through that, I found the gaps between what my comp authors, comp accounts were offering and what my audience needed. And when you find those gaps, so ask yourself this, what are they not doing? How would I have done that differently? Answer that comment differently. Address this conflict. What would, what would I have done differently? Because you're gonna see where your unique experience fills in the gaps for what people are really looking for. The other thing to do with your comp authors is pick the social media that you most enjoy doing. Whether that is you love writing a blog, you love writing a newsletter, Twitter is your jam, you really enjoy Instagram, just pick one. You don't have to overwhelm yourself with it, but look at your comp authors and make a list. If, if you think Danny Shapiro is your comp author, you aspire to a career that is similar to hers, go to her Instagram where she posts pretty regularly and notice she has a format for her daily Instagram stories. Maybe there's a format you want to copy there or a format you want to adapt. 
Um, think about how many times does Danny talk about her book or her podcast? How many times is she posting something personal about, hey, my husband has cancer. Her husband had a cancer struggle last year. You can actually go through and make a list of the topics that are being covered, and that will give you an idea of where the gap is that you can fill. And it'll probably give you ideas for stuff to talk about because you will have responses to what they're posting that you're not necessarily gonna post as, you know, hey, Danny Shapiro said this and I think this, but you might wanna go, oh, hey, okay, so Danny posted this really interesting thing about family secrets. I'm gonna write something about my family secret that's something that's gonna be discussed in the memoir. So earlier in the chat, uh, Chrissy asked that, you know, she's got multiple topics and she's worried that, you know, is she covering too many things? But a lot of it is how do these things provide different doors in for different clients? So I would say that my constant ongoing theme is give yourself permission. I post about writing. I post about travel. I post about circus. Mostly it is from the perspective of give yourself permission. Do you want to do that thing? Why wouldn't you do that thing? Yes, doing that thing will be hard. I will help you here. Take my hand. Let's look at how to do the thing. Give yourself permission. And so everything I talk about, no matter how wacky or out there it is, it almost always ties back to my overall message of help people feel powerful about doing the thing they aspire to do. Ashley, what about you? Do you have an un ongoing theme? I do. I want to say first, I was going to type this in the chat. Allison, giving people permission is why I always feel so damn good when I read her posts. Always. Whether it's her newsletter, whether it's her caption on Instagram, even her funny tweets, there's always this little twist like, you can do that even if you didn't think you could. Um, so that's why I feel so good. And that's what we got to, we have to think about how are people feeling when they're coming to our account? What do we want them to feel? Okay. As a, as a skating choreographer, I knew that 13 seconds in when my team did that lift or that element, I wanted the judges to feel a certain way. I wanted the audience to feel a certain way. We have to do the same thing with our reader. We're going to bring them in. And we're, we know exactly how we're hooking them, whether it's that first sentence, whether it's the image, whether it's the first slide of the video, we hook them in. And then we have to be quite certain the emotional journey, that tiny little narrative arc that may be 15 seconds long, uh, that we are going to take them on and where we want to drop them at the end. Do we want them to feel motivated to do something politically? Do we want them to feel encouraged like they have permission? In my situation, I want people to feel better about the relationships they're in and also know, huh, I could make these little changes to make them even better. So and that's this where- in, Go This ahead, ties into things where like, Ashley posted about hiking last year, but it wasn't just, hey, I went on a hike. It was, I went on a hike and reconnected with my friend and myself and deepened my relationships. It always comes back to what Dinty W. Moore often calls the invisible magnetic river, that theme that drives everything you do. And if you're a novelist, if you're writing fiction, if you're writing short stories, think as well about, well, what do you want your readers to feel and experience? Samantha's talking in the chat about she visited Edith Wharton's house last year. There was a giant content bucket graphic. What did Edith Wharton write about? If I want to weep about society ladies who can't fit in and sacrifice themselves because they're not willing to marry for money, I am going to turn to Edith Wharton. That is my weeping society lady fix right there. So think about it if you write fiction as well. What do you want your reader to experience when they join you on the page? And giving yourself credit for any emotional experience that you can give to people and getting really clear on it. Okay, don't tell yourself it has to be more commercial. It has to be more this. It has to be more that. Get really clear on what you are writing and why and stay true to you. That's why we say with the comp authors, don't look at what they're doing. Look at what they're not doing. So how does this wrap around selling your book or promoting the article that you want people to go read or asking people to sign up for your newsletter, your event, your workshop, go look at my website. 
Well, I want you to remember that every time you watch a TV commercial, they were these things that happened in the middle of shows before we had streaming or could skip ahead on YouTube. There were like little short videos that sold products. The commercial is a 30th of the show. If there's a 30 minute show, the commercial is a minute. We have 29 minutes or you know, once there's six commercials, 24 minutes of enjoyment and entertainment and fun and what we came there for wrapped around a much smaller proportion of commercials. And the ratio we usually say is 10 gives for every ask. Absolutely. So what I, what I say to clients is um, if you ever, ever want to sell something, you need to start giving yesterday. Okay. Because if we are not selling, we need to be giving, we need to be giving out tip sheets. We need to be giving support in the comments. We need to be answering DMS. We need to be resharing other writers, friends, content and, and sharing about their book. We need to be giving, giving, giving just like you would if you were um, in a new neighborhood and wanted to make friends, or if you joined a new dog rescue organization in your new town, you would be there making connections with people so that you knew they trusted you with work and with the animals and with the, the mission that you're all on. So or if you're, if you're a heroin dealer and you want to move to a new corner, first one's free. That's how you get people hooked. That's how you get them involved. The ice cream store, usually most ice cream places will let you have as many free samples as you want until you pick a flavor. You are the heroin ice cream store. There we go. Dog rescuer as well. Like, I think, I think it's all the things, right? Perfect. Um, so to really give, 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 and then um, when you are answering people's questions, I swear to you, when you are focused on the number of quality conversations you are having with other people each day, there will be, there will be half a dozen times every day where someone says, oh, and I have this sort of problem. Did, did you write a, an essay on that? Or I have this and this could, could I order that book or that product you recommended? Or, oh, do you have a workshop coming up? on that because you've been giving and you've been listening to what your community needs, the chances to sell will come right up when you're having those meaningful conversations. Exactly. And people start falling in love with what you have to say. If you're writing fiction, look at what are people complaining about in the other books they read? Do they want a stronger female her heroine? Uh, <laughs> female hero. Do they want more diverse characters? Do they want a book that reflects more of what's about their life, even though it is an epic fantasy? So look for what do your readers really enjoy? What do they want to see? So how do you keep all these ideas, all these photos, all these captions, all these blog posts, how do you keep them straight and have them accessible when it's time to sit down and use them? So I keep notes on the notes app in my phone. I have started transitioning that to notion. So then I can collaborate with my assistant um, if I want her to do something for me. And it also has a nice to-do list function in there. Uh, but finding a place where it's easy for you, I have one note on my phone that's called important links. So. If I want to share with somebody the article I wrote, the blog I wrote for Jane Friedman about how I'm selling books on TikTok without dancing or crying, I can just go and copy that and put it in a Facebook comment for someone in a writer's group. Anything that you routinely have to share with people, if you don't have things you're sharing with people yet, start, start having more of those conversations because we all want that, that back and forth. The, the, the flow with that. Um, also any, um, any links to friends books or local bookstores that you support, all of the people that you could support and places you could point your audience, make sure that you have that saved. Exactly. Um, I'm going to briefly screen share with y'all because I'd like to show you how I organize the things that I'm thinking about. So as many of you know, I blog for the Brevity Literary Magazine. I'm responsible for Tuesdays and Thursdays. And if you ever want to write a guest post, you should absolutely email me with your potential guest post because I would love to help you get it on the Brevity blog. So 
I wake up and I usually write the brevity blog an hour before it is due, which means that I have to have ideas already ready. So for example, how do you do research without an assistant? Um, how can you, uh, what counts as published? People are always asking online, like, oh, I put this on my blog. Does that count as published? Um, I want to talk about at some point, uh, the good, the bad, and the useless, which is hiring, editing, and writing coaches. I also have a whole section for social media where I break down, hey, here are things that I thought were clever that I could potentially tweet about. Like, hey, to find the hair dye that's exactly right for you, check the eye color of the model on the hair dye box. That's what you want to match. That changed my life. Um, you know, different things that I can, different things that I can talk about, different things that I can write about, so that I always have something handy. And this list syncs to my phone as well, so that it's very easy to access it when I want to do social media or when I want to write a blog post. So Louise Ashley, asks, how do you organize, organize yeah. your photos. Yeah. So Louise asks in the chat, and I think this is going to tie into this. Um, that was the things app, right? Was that things three, Allison? Yep. And I'm sharing three? again, because somebody were asking like, how much do I put in there? So while you talk, I'm just going to kind of yeah. flip through stuff. Um, so Allison's going to click and show us how much she has in here. I think it probably varies, um, quite a lot, whether it's just an idea and then she knows that that's going to remind her of what she wanted. If look, this is a longer one. Is this one you already wrote, Allison, or were those ideas? This is one that was a long Facebook post about how to make your cover look look, look professional and look like it fits. So I copied all the Facebook comments I did into there, and uh, and put them Wonderful. in there. Wonderful. Wonderful. This is more like just loose notes. You know, how do you do research without an assistant? Uh, we had Catherine um, Lewis on a couple of episodes ago, and Catherine had some great tips and a webinar about doing research. Um, something about how the Bank of Goodwill helped me launch because, like, I didn't have to post very much about my book. I was able to repost all the stuff that kind, wonderful, amazing people posted on my behalf. So yeah, so sometimes I write a whole thing in here. Often, if I am wanting to get a blog post done, I will even dictate it into my phone and then type it up and, and use that as the rough draft. Sorry, go ahead, Ashley. No, that's fantastic. Thank you for that. Thank you. And yes, this is all on the Things app. Some people are asking, they would love a tutorial on the Things app, Allison. Um, so if you want to put that on, the, on your blue sticky note, or um, if there's a great, you know what? I just learned Notion on YouTube. There were fantastic tutorials of different sizes uh, to learn to, of different lengths yeah. to really learn. And new you platforms. don't have to use a complex system to track your stuff. It also works just fine if you write it on a legal pad. It also works just fine if you paste it into your phone's notes app. I think it's most handy to have it accessible from wherever you are writing or posting so that you can copy paste. Megan suggests Google Sheets, and that you can access from your laptop or from your phone. Put it in the place that is the easiest for you to record your ideas when you have them, and always pause and record the idea at the moment you have it, because you know you'll never remember it later. Okay, so we're that was talking about um, organizing ideas for written content, right? Whether it's a blog, whether it's a tweet, whether it's a newsletter, whether it's a caption on Instagram that's a mini essay. Um, whether it is just a funny thing that you are going to, you know, a funny joke that you're going to make on someone else's post in form of a comment when someone brings up that topic. Okay, for photos, I find the very best thing to do is to set up albums in your camera roll. Um, I have one that's called A plus quotes. I went through uh, face, I scrolled through my Facebook posts from the last year and I took screenshots of things that I said that were funny and I popped it into the A plus quotes folder. Then I could say to my assistant, Gina, make these all into quote cards, please, with the pink background and choose a GIF, a personal GIF that goes with it. And there I had 24 quotes that were ready to post in an album called Ashley ready to post. So that's the way that I do it. We can, you can pull them from different places. Um, you can favorite photos, say that you take photos of yourself or you and your partner or your grandchild or your dog um, or the sunset. Take the photos, take a minute, 
30 seconds afterwards to see which ones are the best and put the heart on them. And then you know, oh, I, I always have some good photos that I've never used in my favorite album. Then take the heart off of that after you post it. Okay, just getting into these little habits with organizing the media on your phone can save you so much time down the, down, down the line. If your photos are a mess, set a timer for 30 minutes and make four albums go through and then send things to those albums. If you are having anybody help you with social media, I use, I swear by shared albums in iPhoto. Um, because then people can, you can comment what you want them, the caption to be, or you can, they can write the image description for you. Um, it's just so easy to keep all of that information right in there within the notes app. I also find it really handy. I use an app called a color story, which is far from the only planning app out there, but you can see, I have a little grid going on in my phone. And with those photos, I can drag and drop them to see what they're going to look like in a certain order. So if you're a person who likes to color coordinate your Instagram, it's really handy to lay them all out. And it's kind of fun and gives me ideas for things to write about, which I kind of like. Ashley, anything else about how we save our content before we shift on to planning? No, I would say next time you have an idea, put it in a place. And then the next time you have an idea, put it in that same place. So just start that. That's all you have to do. You don't have to, you can even forget about those notes that you made um, way back. You don't need to collect everything. Start now. Just one thing on top of another thing. We have a collection. So Ashley, as far as planning content, I know you kind of think big picture. How far out do you plan? Do you intersperse planned posts with off the cuff posts? Do you have a grid? Do you have a calendar? Share your beautiful secrets. Yes. Okay. So I used to just do everything off the cuff. Um, but because writing my newsletters has become more of my focus, and that's going to be the basis of my new book coming out. I have just that Thursdays or every other Thursday, I will take about six reels. My reels have gotten shorter because my long form content is written right now. And then I will have my assistant caption them and I'll go into Canva and I will pull some funny quote cards from before or Facebook status updates and make them into Canva cards and download them. So then I have enough content for Instagram, which is my main platform for the next two weeks. And then I can spend my time writing and all of that happens like within 90 minutes at this point. It used to take me much longer, um, but I've got an system where, like I said, it's just the newsletters that still take me forever. Allison? Now, I do wanna say too, for those of you who do not love social media, social media is not the only way to get your words out there. I have found myself, I used to be really active on Instagram. I am not anywhere near as active on Instagram as I, as I had been. I still often post to my stories, but I haven't done a formal post in probably six weeks right now. Um, what I really like is I like doing the writer's bridge. I like turning up for this every other week. I really like um, writing for the brevity blog. I do deal with that twice a week. And so I am actually spending anywhere between six and 10 hours a week on my quote unquote platform, but it's activities that I genuinely enjoy doing. And right now I'm really enjoying Twitter as well. So I've been doing that a lot more. Um, I tend to follow instead of the grid calendar, careful planning method, I tend to follow the screw it. This is what I feel like doing method. Um, but because I stockpile content, I'm not stuck without an idea. I always have something that fits in my content buckets or that like one of my content buckets is, hey, I'm a little weird and I'll say things that other people won't say. And that's part of who I am too. Um, but right now my primary platform is teaching because to be perfectly honest, a webinar of 350 people who have also paid me to hear what I have to say is like way more fun than spending five hours coming up with the perfect Instagram post. So it's really important to like where you're spending your time. The other thing is use the low stake stuff like Twitter, it's gone in a flash, an Instagram story, it's gone in a flash, and then make notes 
notes of what people actually enjoy, what people resonate with. And then you can make bigger pieces on that. If people like your six tweets about the migraine cookbook, you got to write a migraine cookbook. And Stephanie has done so. Ashley? I love that. Like the low, we just got have to remember how low stakes social media really is. Um, I told the client yesterday, I use my Instagram stories as my testing ground. I just am me. I'm silly. I'm cooking. I'm talking about chili. I'm talking about sex. I'm talking about parenting. And then from there, that is where people will say to me, could you please tell me more about this? And just getting in there, having fun. And if that means, you know, you write six ridiculous tweets a day, write six ridiculous tweets. You have to just start getting it out there. Um, Allison was a performer and so was I, and we both coached performers. And what I always told my skaters was the thing to wait for is not to feel scared. <laughs> it's to perform and not look scared shitless. You're going to be scared shitless. But the, the perfection is in not looking like you're scared. So tweet like you're not scared, even though you are getting your Instagram stories or whatever platform it is, blog, um, you know, send, send guest newsletters and blogs to Jane Friedman, to the Brevity blog, like get your writing out there. Don't wait to feel good before you do, because that doesn't, yeah. I mean. And you really got to fake it till you make it. So one of the things I want to say to you in just a second, we're going to talk briefly about other writers platforms and how they how they have built them start building platform before your work in progress is ready. Think about your content buckets. Um, if you are currently a member of the express lane, we talk more about content buckets in episode three, episode nine, episode 15. You can check the archives. If you are not in the express lane, we did not invent the term content buckets. And if you web search for content buckets, you will come up with a lot more information about this. Bear in mind, you are not an influencer and a lot of contact Con content bucket information is aimed at people who want to gain sponsorships to sell products, which is fundamentally what an influencer is. You are a writer. And so take the stuff you read with a grain of salt and ask yourself, is this aimed at someone who wants to genuinely connect with a specific audience? Or is this aimed at someone who is trying to dramatically increase their following among a larger group of people who may be only tangentially interested in them as a person. Ashley, you want to add anything to that? Yeah. Question from Rachel in the chat saying her friends often respond, but she doesn't often get responses from people she doesn't know. Um, and I misread it. And I was like, I thought that she was saying her friends never respond because I think friends and family are like my, my support in like real life in my profession. It's a different circle of people who I really love. Um, so, and Abby answered the question. All right. So Rachel, the way that you're going to get people to respond to your posts is by offering some sort of help or encouragement, like, oh, that's so funny. That's what I thought too, on someone else's posts in the comments, um, giving, giving, giving also in your posts, think about what is in it for the viewer, what is in it for the reader more than what is in it for me. And if you start giving, 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 then people will say, oh. I never thought of it that way. Um, Rachel had a video that did really, really well a few months ago talking about how um, she had to make the hard decision after her husband's plane crash to not bring her husband home, to have him have his care outside their home and saying what was right for my children and what was right for my husband were two different things. And she was the person who was in that situation having to make that decision. Um, and a lot of people resonated with that because I think that's a really hard um, you know, between a rock and a hard place, trying to do the right thing when you know those two possibilities are um, not aligned. So why content buckets? Because fundamentally, this is building your platform. So I was looking at amazon.com. You guys should all be seeing my screen looking at amazon.com now. And I was scrolling through to see, well, what are the platforms of the memoirists who are in that top 50 of memoirists. And once we get past the sponsored posts with the advertisements, well, Ashley C. Ford has a media career. 
Michelle Zauner is part of an indie pop band. She's done business as Japanese Breakfast for many years and is famous in the indie pop scene. Rachel Wargus is up here because she's a brand new release. She came out this week, and so all of her pre-orders have popped her up to the top of the list. Mala's Cat is a posthumous memoir from a woman who survived in the woods under Nazi occupation in Poland. Chanel Miller was a, a part of a famous sexual assault case, which, you know, sucks that that is her platform, but that is her platform. Dina Castor, world re record holding marathonist. Um, we all know who Muhammad Ali is. Uh, Suleika Jawad, she wrote a New York Times column for like two years and published in a lot of big deal magazines like Vanity Fair. Um, Jenny Pentland is Roseanne Barr's child. And this memoir is all about what it's like to grow up with Roseanne Barr as your mom. Lauren Dolly Duke is a yoga instructor who holds yoga retreats for thousands of people worldwide. Um, Silen Busby here worked at Random House, Simon and Schuster, Harper Collins, and was senior editor at Teen Magazine. And then we have Tara Westover, who had no platform at all before she wrote this memoir. The, this memoir sold on the power of its writing and the power of its story. So there are some very powerful reasons why it is okay for you not to have a lifetime of platform. Um, yeah, and, and Stephanie's pointing out as well, Suleika did a viral TED Talk. Abby's pointing out she started the isolation journal. She has over 100,000 followers. So many of us are not coming from a lifetime of establishing our particular platform or of, you know, fighting our way to the top of the publishing house. When we come back from breakout rooms, we are going to talk about why that's okay and what you're going to do instead. Remember, breakout rooms are never as weird as you are worried they are going to be. You do not have to go into a breakout room. Feel free to stay here in the main with us. You're going to take about six minutes and tell each other your favorite two content buckets. What do you love to talk about in the world? Sorry, I, I dropped out of mine. I, I felt like hanging here today. Oh, please do. Yeah, you yes. are always welcome to just hang here. Yeah. That is always okay. Yeah. How you doing? Good. How are you? I have Good a tiny love fit. story. I have a tiny love story coming out this afternoon. Oh, yay, excited. Abby. Congratulations. Thank you. That's actually fantastic. My one, which is awesome. I know. I, I, that's what I was just going to ask. And then I didn't want to sound like I'm greedy. Have you done that before? No, no. I wasn't I, good I, enough. <laughs> I want more, more, more. I so, love yeah. it. I love it. That's great. I'm working on a brevity blog piece for Dinty. I awesome. love writing for brevity blog. I've had mm. two pieces there already and it's fun. Well, we love having you. So please keep popping them up. Ooh. Hey, Casey, Hi. we were talking about you earlier. We showed your magazine cover. Oh, oh, you did. My old bad magazine cover with all the crazy bad. colors. But you know what? The point is that like, it's not about fabulous graphic design. It's about thinking about what you have to say. And I actually want to use your newsletter as an example in the express lane this week too, because I think your four categories are such a clever idea. So oh, Casey's doing this thing now where each of her newsletters is going to have the categories and they are news of the day, looking back to look ahead, like an old post, an old piece, an old idea, inspiration everywhere and wanderlust and reverie. And I think those are so awesome. I love that. Well, you know, I saw somebody else's newsletter, M Mimi Zeman, actually. She's got a new newsletter with the category. And I just thought that's going to make it so much. This is the way my mind works. If I can just plug something into each category, great. You, you know. gotta build. You gotta build a container. This is why I choreographed right. skating programs and wrote my book, yeah. plotted my book on Excel spreadsheets. I right. need. It's like show me the absolute boundaries. Yeah, the, the perimeter of this, uh, and then I will fill it creatively. But show right. me exactly what needs to be. And those, if you pick the right categories, there are things that you naturally want to post about. Yeah. So it, you know, I think I have like endless material to go in each one of those. So yeah, thanks. That's great. And you I can was, change it anytime you like as well. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. That's right. I was sitting here editing a piece that I'm going to send to Solver's Stories, and all of a sudden it was quarter to two. Like, <laughs> it's like, oh my God, Writer's Bridge. I just forgot well, all about some, it. That's awesome that you're sending to Solver's Stories. I'm thinking about a, um, writing a piece for Solver Stories too, because my husband and I do cryptic crosswords together. Oh, that's great. 
they're so hard. It takes two of us every time. They're yeah. so hard. But how long does it take you though, Allison? It takes the um, two of you to finish it. Okay, but like how long? <laughs> so an you average ever. one, it'll take us dinner plus maybe another like 20 minutes. A hard one might take us dinner, lunch, and dinner again. So, yeah. but I mean, but New York Times crossword I can do in like five, 10 minutes. Those are, those are pretty fast. You know, or like the Sunday one will take me, you know, 20, 25 minutes. Um, Saturday is the hardest. Sunday is a large Thursday level, but the cryptics are the ones that are the British crosswords. And they have the clues where it's like, oh, you have to anagram this word and put in this other syllable, or this is a clever double definition. Um, like the most cryptic clue I've ever seen in a US crossword is actually Will Shorts's favorite clue ever. He's the guy who's the puzzle editor for the New York mm -hmm. Times. And it's a cryptic clue. It's a, it's a double definition. Um, it turns into another story. Spiral wow. staircase. Oh, oh God. God, no, I can't, I can't. <laughs> Isn't no. that freaking clever? No, no oh. but no, but no, I am too much of a perfectionist in Enneagram 3 to in get any enjoyment out of that. I can't, I can't. I'm so glad that you can, and I love that you are writing them too. You and Al, oh, Allison, I'm freaking impressed because, yep. Triggered over here. Ashley's so triggered by that. Yes. I know, I know, I know. So this is a little bit off topic, but do you all know about Wordle? Not yeah. Wordle? Love Wordle. It's oh, my, no. It's what is Wordle? Wordle. Wordle. Yeah, we just did it today. Wordle. It's What's the hard. difference? It's ge geography. There's oh, like a oh, shape. Yeah. There's like a shape of a country. And then you have to guess which country it is. And whatever you guess, it tells you how many kilometers away you are and what direction you need to go to find the right country. I, I mean, I, I am not good at it at all, but I'm not above opening the map and cheating because to me, it's a geography lesson. So I'm going to use it the way it works for me. But I'm much better with words than geography. <laughs> so much oh, better. Funny. Like the one yesterday was Diana. Like we all know the shape of Guyana, right? <laughs> no. That's so, too it's hard. Fun, for though. Check it out. Ashley, do you know there's a tail tail ordle of uh, it has um, to do with Taylor Swift? My daughter. I did it. Oh, I did it every day. My daughter, day. <laughs> my daughter I, uh, is Swifty, and she always wants me to tell you like about Taylor Swift stuff. I love it. You know what? I won't even let myself open Wordle because I want to like achieve and be I just I I have a life. I to love it because there's have only life. one a day and no. I make it my reward that I because I usually spend an hour on social media in bed in the morning before I get up because I have no children and no pets and wordle is my little reward for okay you got out of bed now you may wordle I wordle at 1202 like right after midnight when as soon as it's up <laughs> love that love that that's fantastic when you try to search for wordle the one with the map you only keep getting wordle so somebody put the link in the chat that is a great idea yes you have to go down to where on the search where it says we are searching for wordle do you really want us to look for wordle and if you click that uh, then it'll come up but i can see if i can get the link for you that makes sense. So welcome back from breakout rooms, everybody. If you did not get a chance to give your contact information or your socials to the people that you were sharing with, feel free to post them in the chat. That is always okay. Um, in just a minute, we're going to tell you three things that you can do today. And we are also going to tell you why it's okay that you do not have a lifetime of platform and fame behind you. So we do want to let you know, feel free to join us on the express lane. It's at the writersbridge.com slash express lane. Uh, it's $25.99 for a month, or there is also a subscription price for a year that includes a discount. It is two emails a week that are each a simple, actionable platform building tip that you can do ideally in about 15 minutes. We try to keep it into really short bites. And that's for everybody who comes out of Writers Bridge fired up and overwhelmed. So we urge you to check that out. Also, please feel free to forward the Writer's Bridge email that you're gonna get tomorrow with the replay to a writer friend who you think would love to come and join you here at the Writer's Bridge. 
March the 1st, our next episode is going to be platform reviews. We will be looking at your platforms for volunteers and talking about what's working, what can you do even better, what can the other people writing in your genre learn from your platform to apply to their platform. And uh, in the next email that comes out, you will get a chance to volunteer if you are interested in having your platform reviewed. So... Ashley, we have three big things that people can do, well, three little things that people can do today to put this content bucket information into action. What do we recommend? All right, first thing that I want you all to think about um, is that those people who have their those big platforms, they didn't assume that a book was going to open a golden door to an audience and to colleagues and to agents and editors falling at their feet. They worked before they got the book, okay? If you have already written your book, imagine in your mind, act as if it's already a New York Times bestseller. Act like your TED Talk went viral last week. What do you post today, okay? Act like that door is already open. And three quick and specific things you can do. Try the magazine cover exercise. If that's too big a job, just make a simple list of your content buckets. What do you enjoy talking about? Take a look at your past content, wherever you're active, social media, blogs, publishing, how much of what you're posting or writing about already falls into your content buckets and where do you wanna write more about something you've already covered? And like we were talking about in the chat, notice what's gotten the best response in your past posts. Can you revisit one or more of those topics? Can you reword a tweet that did okay, but not great? Can you tweak an Insta post that did okay, but not great? Like Ashley said, sorry, go ahead, Ashley. Sorry, with, with that right there, what Allison said, reworking, tweaking. Now we wouldn't just write one draft of our masterpiece and expect that to be printed and put on shelves. You can repeat yourself over and over and over on social media. Think of it like a stand-up comic who is practicing the bit, seeing how it lands with the crowd, refining that joke, saying it again. People who love your stuff will love to hear it again. And it will resonate with them differently if it's a month later, six months later, a year later. So do not be afraid to repeat yourself. Also, when we repeat ourselves, some of us think of a person very close to us, neighbor, friend, cousin, brother, sister, who may be like, Oh, they're going to think that's annoying if I say that again. Guess what? They're not your audience. Out here, these thousands of other humans who are interested in what you say and haven't heard it yet, those are the people we need to be focused on when we're posting or when we're creating. Keep your eye on the prize. It is not here in the peanut gallery. Allison. Exactly. Exactly. You can either build an entire life that is your platform or you can reach your readers directly and now. Being on social media is not a punishment, it's a gift. You don't have to work your way up the publishing house ladder. You don't have to hide in the woods from Nazis. You don't have to build a yoga empire. You are able to talk directly to your readers one at a time and then five at a time or 10 at a time or 50 at a time until they're all talking about you. And whether or not your book sells a million copies, you will have reached some of the people who need your words long before you publish your book. With that on mute, let's give a round of applause. I will never get tired of William's ism. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Feel free to Thank unmute you. yourselves for a happy Great. goodbye. You're awesome. Thank goodbye. You, <laughs>